Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another big book review with your boy, Professor Pecora in the house. I hope that you're doing well and uh, let's jump right into this. So before we go into reviewing the book for this video, let's recap. So we are doing a early bullseye cover appearance series but before we move on, we, I want to backtrack, okay? So, obviously, the f origin and first appearance of the new Bullseye first appeared in March of 1976 in Daredevil number 131, which was then followed up by his second appearance and second cover appearance in Daredevil number 132 in April of 1976, okay? Then Bullseye's third appearance occurred in Daredevil number 141, which is also his third cover appearance, published in 1977. And then the other 1977 issue is Daredevil number 146 on that awesome cover where he has the pistol and he's pointing it at Daredevil on the television station. Badass cover. So that was uh, Bullseye's fourth cover appearance in the history of comics. So those were the two 1976 and the two 1977 covers. There is no 1978 cover of Bullseye. Just n not there, right? So then we got to jump to 1979 and enter the Frank Miller era where we have Daredevil number 159, right? Which is the rare and only Bullseye cover appearance in which Bullseye is not in costume. And then we jump to Daredevil 160 where he's, uh, that's that awesome uh, bullseye cover where he is strangling the Black Widow with a hairdryer cord, which is crazy. Uh, a Frank Miller classic. And then 161, which, you know, he's drop kicking, uh, you know, Daredevil off the historic wooden roller coaster called the Cyclone in Coney Island, Coney Island Brooklyn. So that, those are badass covers. Daredevil 159, 160, 161. Those are all published in 1979 and all done by Frank Miller. Awesome covers. For the year 1980, there is no bullseye cover appearance for the year 1980, so we have to jump to 1981. And in 1981, we only have two bullseye cover appearances, with the, the one being in Daredevil number 169, which was published in March, right? So March of 1981, which featured Daredevil's Bullseyes. eighth cover appearance in the history of comics. Then we jump to Daredevil number 172, which is published in July of 1981. And basically, I, I don't have that book, so that's why I'm kind of filling this in right now. I had like two or three copies, direct editions, 9 eights, but I sold them. So I just have to talk about it real quick, and then we'll jump in to the 181. But yeah, Daredevil number 172, a really nice uh, bl blue background, light blue background cover drawn by Frank Miller and inked by Klaus Jansen. It's actually the third appearance of the Kingpin in the, in the, in the Daredevil title. And it represents Bullseyes. Daredevil's ninth cover appearance in the history of comics. He's basically lunging forward with the serrated blade, you know, attacking uh, attacking Daredevil, you know, in midair. And then you have the New York mob there and the kingpin looming in the background with a lit cigarette in the background. And uh, it's a pretty dope uh, cover. You know what I'm saying? Frank Miller greatness, Daredevil 172, representing the ninth cover appearance of Bullseye in the history of comics. With all that being said, with all that background knowledge, you could always go back to all of my other previous uh, early Bullseye cover appearance videos. Check them out. I have a whole series on, on the, uh, the homepage of my YouTube channel. You can check that out. They're all dope. They're all awesome. So check them out when you get a chance, if you haven't already. All right? So now, so there's only two uh, 1981 uh, bullseye cover appearances, uh, Daredevil 169 and Daredevil 172. So now we're jumping to 1982, and there's only one bullseye cover appearance in 1982, and that is Daredevil 181. And I have a CGC graded 9.8 white pager newsstand edition. Wow. 
it's a pretty, pretty uh, beautiful copy that I have right here. And wow, it's just perfectly wrapped and centered. The colors are super vibrant on this copy. Uh, the cut is really, really good. You know what I mean? It's super sharp. And uh, yeah, I love this. The 10th cover appearance of Bullseye in the history of comics. You can see him lunging forward, attacking uh, Elektra. And in a classic, classic Frank Miller issue where Daredevil and Elektra battle to the death. One wins, one dies. And if you know the story, Elektra dies in this historical issue that we have right here. In Bullseye's 10th cover appearance in the history of comics. And uh, yes, this is a classic. Okay, and that is the reason why this is this book is very significant in the history of comics. Now, if you kind of think about characters that died, main characters like Gwen Stacy and uh, Amazing Spider-Man 121, right, published in 1973, that was pretty groundbreaking for the time uh, for Marvel to kill off Gwen Stacy, you know, Spider-Man's love interest. And it, it wasn't too far. I mean, this is published in April of 1982. And, uh, you know, they decided to kill off Elektra. Now, if you think about it, Frank Miller made a pretty big decision because he just introduced Elektra in Daredevil 168, right, in January of 1981. So this is like a little over a year, only a little over a year since Elektra made her iconic debut, and now she's already getting killed off by Bullseye, all right? So pretty historical and dramatic. And when you think about Bullseye as being like the ultimate psychopathic, brutal daredevil villain, with when Bullseye killed Elektra in this issue and used one of her sides basically to stab her right just push her body right into the the side you know and there's a there's this large panel within this book that displays it and it's pretty groundbreaking for the time as well it just solidifies bullseye's resume of being daredevil's arch enemy you know what i mean i think it was definitely with this issue it was just like this is serious he just killed electra and now, now it, it's just like you have, he has solidified himself as the ultimate daredevil villain. You know what I mean? Yes, Kingpin is there too, but Bullseye is like, he's like the saber tooth to Wolverine, right? So Bullseye is that type of villain to daredevil and forever will be, you know, based on this historical key issue when he, he literally murdered, assassinated Elektra, you know, and basically... Uh, the backstory is that the Kingpin hired Elektra to replace Bullseye. And Bullseye got pissed off, you know, because they had like a, a fallout or whatever, uh, you know, because he, he failed one of his missions and to, to kill Daredevil, etc. So the Kingpin hired Elektra and then Bullseye was like, F that, you know, I'm going to go take her ass out and try to gain the respect back from the Kingpin and get my job back. I'm the top assassin. Right. So it's a really, really dope storyline, artwork, groundbreaking for the time. Uh, the 10th cover appearance of Bullseye, the death of Elektra. And, you know, obviously we know Elektra comes back and I will be doing another. I have a review video on Daredevil number 190 when that's actually her resurrection. I talk I will talk about that in the future. So look out for that future review video. But that's also another key issue, okay? So, Daredevil 181. Wow. And I love this. So, let's talk about the newsstand edition versus direct editions here. Yes, this was published in April of 1982. For the time period, yes, there were more newsstand editions published than direct editions for the time period, okay? Okay. Um, you know, as the years progressed into the 90s, that would change where there would be less uh, newsstand editions and more direct editions. But for the time period here, um, direct editions were more rare than newsstand editions. However, when we're discussing 
high grade, super high grade newsstand edition copies. You always have to keep in mind, yes, although that is true, they were still heavily read and mishandled because these newsstand editions would be placed on the shelves of bookstores, uh, grocery stores, on the spinner comic book racks. They would be placed in gas stations, convenience stores, 7-Elevens, tossed in a bag with their candy or whatever you're buying at the, the gas station. That's how they were handled. And you got to think, in 1982, comic book reading was still very popular. You know, video games were just on the verge of breaking through with Nintendo and, and all that. But it was still like, it was still pretty early on. You know, if I even remember right, when I was a kid, Nintendo, the Nintendo system wasn't even out in 1982. You know what I mean? So it was like... You know, people read their comic books. So to get a new stand edition in a 9-8 white pages, like perfectly wrapped in center like this, it is a big deal. And you won't see as many new stand editions around, you know? So you could just check like eBay listings. You could t check like all the auctions. There's a lot of 9.8 grade uh, copies graded, right? But you don't see the new stand variant, the new stand edition variants as much. It's a fact. You just don't. So that just proves my point because there was, uh, there's been a lot of copies graded of this issue. Thousands. I think as of this recording, I think there's like almost 6,000 copies graded, universal copies graded, right? And you still, you see a bunch of direct editions, but you don't see as, as many of, of the newsstand editions in 9.8. You know, there's been months and months and months. I haven't even seen one newsstand edition uh, copy made available on the market, you know. So it is still much rarer to acquire a 9.8 white page newsstand edition of Daredevil number 181. Featuring the 10th cover appearance of Bullseye and the death of Elektra. So that's that in terms of newsstand editions, right? All right, another thing that I, I do wanna bring up too that's interesting, you might have not have known, but the entire Frank Miller run was all published bi-monthly. I mean, even, the, even before the Miller run, it was published bi-monthly, okay? Until Daredevil number 171, when the Kingpin and Daredevil meet for the first time and have their... Uh, historic first battle and that was published in uh, I have my notes right here so basically that was published in June of 1981 June of 1981 so with Daredevil number 171 published in June of 1981 the title started going being published monthly okay there's something to, to, to note there okay and that's why you'll notice that, you know, in terms of bullseye cover appearances, there are jumps, right? Like he wasn't even on a cover in 1980. But you also have to remember that the series was published bi-monthly, you know, during that time period. So you only had six issues where he could have possibly been on a cover. But because of the, the bi-monthly publications, the chances are obviously going to be slimmer, right? Now, same thing with all of 1979 and, you know, et cetera, right? So that's that in terms of monthly and bi-monthly publishing. At this point, it obviously, it was already published uh, monthly because it started with issue number 171. And then the other thing, I, I want to give you the background story about this particular copy. So I originally purchased this one as a CBCS 9.8 off-white to white page copy. And I looked at it closely and I was like, man, this looks like it has great crossover potential to be cracked out, pressed, and resubmitted to CGC to cross that copy over as a CGC graded 9.8 copy. And that's exactly what I did. And I submitted, submitted that copy to the comic presser, Chris the, of the comic presser, and I have his information in the description uh, below in this video. You could check him out. And uh, he's based out in Raleigh, North Carolina. And he did a really great job, you know, with my book. And uh, it even came back with perfect white page quality, if you see that right there, right? 
So not only did I get the crossover 9.8, I also received the perfect white page designation. So that was pretty awesome. You know what I mean? So thank you, Chris, again. Comic Presser, appreciate you, you know, and uh, that was awesome. So yeah, Daredevil 181, new stand edition, new stand edition CGC 9.8. Beautiful copy. Look at the colors. It's so vibrant, you know. You could look at the cover wrap. And the spine, it has a, such a solid spine, you guys. Very solid, you know what I mean? You don't even see a spine tick. Nothing, man. It's, it is a, this is a solid 9.8. Like, when I say solid, it is super solid. You know what I'm saying? You, you can see it for yourself. Even in the back. See? Avoiding the glare. There we go. And here, yeah, I just want to give you guys a good look. But yeah, man, awesome looking copy, man. Beautiful. All right, you guys. Well, that's going to be it for this one. Just making sure I didn't forget anything. But no, this is a beautiful book. The 10th cover appearance of Bullseye. And get ready for the next set of review videos. And I thank you so much for checking these out. And if you watch the whole thing through, man, God bless you. I really appreciate that, you know. And, uh, yeah, I try to give as much information as possible. I love these books and love the early bullseye cover appearances. I'm going to put it down right now. But, yeah, you know, definitely uh, having fun with the series. And it's just awesome, you know. Bullseye is just like the, my favorite villain, man. He's just... He's just badass, you know what I'm saying? So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. I really appreciate you. And, uh, you know, if there's anything else you you want me to kind of like, you, get it, you, you have another idea you would like to see me do or anything, hey, just let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to sign this one off for now. Um, you know, be blessed. Stay safe, you know, and... Uh, yeah, you know, love you guys, man. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right, peace and God bless.